Hello everybody, welcome back to another Black Ops 2 video. Today's video is going to be centered around looking at the top 5 most beautiful maps in Black Ops 2 multiplayer. All 31 maps are eligible to be on this list and without further ado, let's get into it. Number 5 on this list goes to Plaza. Now I am aware that Plaza is not the most beautiful map up front, but it's the fact that everything in the map works together to show Black Ops 2's more artistic side to it that makes it worth putting in the top 5. It has an amazing skybox, great use of contrasts and highlights, and even elements that take place outside the map, such as the lights and fireworks, to further aid in showing off Black Ops 2's color palette. Plaza isn't a one-note beauty. It takes a bit of everything and mingles it together to create a very good-looking package, and that, to me, solidifies why Plaza deserves 5th place on this list. Plaza was great because everything worked together really well to make it as uplifting and beautiful as it is. Encore, on the other hand, is that, but just a little bit better. You have a beautiful sunlight shining through. You have great use of colors, especially in the stage area. There's lots of saturation here, more than Plaza. And while it may not have the most beautiful color palette of all time, at least not compared to everything past Encore, it still is a beautiful map. There's a spinning ferris wheel outside the map. There is tons of water that reflects the sun's light. There's a lot going on, but it's beautiful because of it. It is rather unfortunate that aesthetics like this aren't always talked about because usually how much a map is talked about is determined by its map quality and not its aesthetic. But while Encore is basically just a good map, its aesthetic is beyond great. And I think it should be appreciated more. I get that Call of Duty is supposed to be based around war and shouldn't be sunshine and rainbows, but tell me you wouldn't love to see more maps like Grind that are so lively and beautiful because of its great use of saturation. Don't you guys think that Call of Duty should aim to make maps like these more? They don't have to make up the whole game, but at least a map like this from time to time would not be bad on the eyes. I love playing vibrant maps like this, so why hold them back? Look at Splash from Black Ops 3. Tell me that it isn't a beautiful map. It's zany, it's crazy, it's far-fetched, but it looks like a masterpiece. And in my head, Grind is like the prequel to that. Splash, in my eyes, is aesthetically inspired by Grind. An equally as crazy and zany concept with great colors that Splash would take up a notch further. Call of Duty should do things like this more, and I think we can all agree on that. Is it unfair to say that Nuketown 2025 is not only one of the best looking maps in Black Ops 2, but is the best Nuketown we've gotten in terms of looks? I said it. Take me. Kill me. Do whatever you gotta do. But the point is, Black Ops 1 Nuketown looked pretty good as it was. Then Black Ops 2 came along and knocked it out of the park. I did like the looks of it in Black Ops 3, and while it was more colorful, I just have to say that Black Ops 2's version is a balance. A balance between a concept and an execution of it. Black Ops 2 as a whole is meant to be futuristic, but it doesn't do it in such a way that's daunting like Advanced Warfare did in every Call of Duty that preceded it a couple years after, and so everybody said we had enough of the futuristic bullshit, piss off with it. But the point I'm trying to make here is that the futuristic elements of 2025 Aid it in a way that makes it feel unique and interesting without taking it to this great extreme such as the ways of Black Ops 3. Which, again, I liked, but it was a little bit too much for me. Nuketown and Grind together are both maps that should be brought up in the conversation of what color and saturation can do for the beauty of some multiplayer maps out there and why Call of Duty should go back to making these maps feel so alive. They can make white and gray in the many shades of it, as well as black look good, but what if we want more? What if we want something that's more of an artistic masterpiece rather than just a pretty good looking war torn battlefield? It's a shame we don't get maps like these anymore, but it makes us appreciate what we had, and Nuketown is no different. Before I declare the gold medal of all beautiful maps, I did want to give an honorable mention to Frost. While it may not have the best lighting nor skybox, there are some background elements, in my opinion, that make it feel more fleshed out and is definitely a unique aesthetic as far as Black Ops 2 goes, with Downhill being the only other snow map. I put Hijacked at number 1. Now, even if it's not the most beautiful map in your eyes, it's definitely deserving of top 5, hell I'd even debate 3. 
The point is, for me, though, I would say it's the best map. And I want to talk about that. I can say with 90% certainty, when I say beautiful and Black Ops 2 in the same sentence, this is the map that's going to come to your head. And that's because of the way the sun reflects off the water, the lighting of this map, the color of the sky, everything about it. This map makes orange look like the best color in the world. This map shits on light blue. Uh, that's my favorite color, by the way. But the point is, it is such an immaculate use of everything that Black Ops 2 could ever use to show how artistic and unique its aesthetics can be. So if you want to isolate me on this yacht in the middle of this ocean where we can't see anything except this low resolution island beside us, baby take me, I'm waiting. Because I have nothing better to do when I'm on hijack than look at a fictional sun during a fictional but probably for not much longer Cold War. That is the beauty of this map.